Hello and welcome to episode 202 of the Heart of Markness Led Zeppelin podcast. I am Mark. How's it going? I have a little bit of a cold again. Yeah, but it's day three and it's already fading away. It was, it was a close call, but it's on its way out. Sorry. Today, 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 we have the beautiful new tape. It's a couple weeks old now because I did Jonesy last week because he was worth it. And, uh, but still a new tape from a wonderful taper named Michael Gillespie. I know this because he was interviewed by Mark McFall on the Zep fan podcast episode seven. And it's really cool. It's a cool story. Uh, the dude who recorded this, oh, it's blooming in 1970. Let me tell you when the fuck it is. Sorry. Ba, 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 ba. I just closed the window that had that information. April 12th, 1970, the Met Center, Bloomington, mm, I guess that's Minnesota, possibly Idaho, incognito. All right, <clears throat> we'll look into that. April 12th, 1970, good times, good times. And the gentleman, Mr. Gillespie, who taped this, was a DJ at a rock and roll radio station at the time. And if you listen to Zep fan number seven, you'll know which one, because I don't remember. But he told the story of how he snuck his tape player, his cassette player, top-loading cassette player, 1970, so it's going to be a big honking piece of equipment that probably takes big-ass D-cell batteries, Rayovac, silvers, <laughs> probably. And... um he he snuck the microphone cords up the sleeves of his of his jacket, leather coat, or what I imagine leather. I imagine fringed leather. I'm imagining Dennis Hopper and Easy Rider doing this. So perhaps. And it's funny because now the gentleman is like 76, 77 years old. Still cool, still really eloquent, but you know, probably quite a few decades removed from fringe jackets and handlebar mustaches. But I don't know. In any case, he snuck the mic leads up his sleeves and kind of palmed the microphone with his thumb and finger and then did the peace sign with his remaining fingers and he did that for the entire concert both arms upright and in doing so he managed to be above the heads of people so he got a clear sonic you know access <clears throat> and diminished crowd noise of people around him because he was above them <laughs> your majesty the presents are revolting you said it they stink on ice not above them that way oh no no that's a different movie i'm thinking of in uh my favorite year also produced by mel brooks that's why it had the mel brooks connection uh uh peter o'toole plays alan swan an actor like the Errol Flynn character in 1950s. He's going to do live television. Anyway, he's hanging on the balcony of a building by his scarf, his Jimmy Page kind of scarf. And he's shit-faced, and he has a cigarette. And people at a dinner party on the floor below him look down and say, I think Alan Swan is beneath us. And his, guy, his friend goes, of course he's beneath us. He's an actor. That's what that meant. What meant, Mark? Never mind. Plowing ahead, as Bill Burr says. Uh, so he made a really nice recording, as nice as could be with the tech of the time. And he speaks about how shitty the PA system was, both in general in 1970 and specifically the system that Zeppelin had, because, you know, you could kind of get what you could get. This is before Shoko became their sound system. And uh, that the, the back in 1970... And back in the day, and you guys who were back in the day know this, you know, it's, it, everything wasn't run through the PA now like it is. Everything wasn't mixed and split and processed and compressed and, and limited and then fed out to super high fidelity, full frequency, incredibly highly powered speakers to fill a whole stadium without being deafeningly loud sometimes and still really crisp and clear. Back then, it was the amps on the stage and at least at this show he says although bonzo must have been amplified so he was run through the pa too all right that whole thing is thrown out the guy's full of shit don't listen to this show everything he says is a lie uh just kidding mr gillespie <sighs> let's listen to some songs 1970 zeppelin in any case what it comes down to is this gentleman through mark mcfall i believe 
um, found this tape, converted this tape, digitized it or marked it or somebody did. And now we have a new Zeppelin show. Kind of, it's in the same vein as uh, Dogs of Doom. So the ripple effect is still happening. You know, holy Christ, I hope more stuff comes out of the woodwork. So thanks, Mark McFall. Thanks, Michael Gillespie. And let's listen to We're Gonna Groove, shall we? I realize I don't play that one much because I always think it's like, well, they have the Royal Arbor Hall one and that's kind of definitive plus Coda. But, you know, fuck it. Let's listen. Here you go. Actually, no, we're not. Because, <clears throat> I got to tell you, sound quality isn't great. He's getting his shit together. It sounds really bad. I forgot about that. <sighs> so, what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to play Since I've Been Loving You, which was the teaser track that was released by Mark McFall uh, before the release of the entire tape. And it sounds pretty gosh darn great. So here we go. Sorry for the false start there. Since I've been loving you by Led Zeppelin, April 12th, 1970.
What an abrupt ending. I know how much you love abrupt endings. However, that was superlative, considering Zeppelin Three was not even a glint in Jimmy's eye, although it was, uh, and nobody knew what that song was. That was the first time they heard that song, and they wouldn't hear it again until months later when Zeppelin Three came out. Pretty neato, the evolution. That's why there's some parts of it, you're like, where's the part that, you know, but beautifully, beautifully played. Holy schma goalie. Exactly. That's what I said. All right, pals. What did I have to tell you? Oh, nothing. I read an article while you were listening uh, in the NME about Steve Albini, Steve Albini tweeting about why he hates Steely Dan. And he shits on Steely Dan so hard. Not that their music sucks, not nothing, just nothing that they're just horrible people and, and, and just the worst. And it's funny. It's hilarious. I like Steely Dan fine. I'm not going to like get in a fight about it, but <laughs> it's so good. All right. That's what I was doing. Uh, what are we going to hear now? Uh, let's just jump into another song. Bring it on home. I like that song. Let's hear how it sounds. I don't remember. But before we do, I want to address the whispering that you could hear, or that you hopefully heard, on Since I've Been Loving You, that kind of popped up a few minutes in. Fear not, that was just me subliminally suggesting that you pee yourself. That's all that is. Subliminal messaging, it's the only one you heard. They're going on right now, but I've got them buried deeper. No, it was the guy whispering because they broadcast this show on the radio because he was a DJ and he, he marked it that way so that it would be identifiable and just, you know, like a watermark. That's what that is. All right. Bring it on home.
Very interesting, yeah? I really enjoy that song. Live, mm. Mm, 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 mm. It's like a Snickers bar. It really satisfies. It's fun. Gets the crowd involved. There's good chemistry. There's fun. Jimmy gets to show off. The band gets to show off. It's, it's got a good flow. Like uh, Walk This Way from Aerosmith did a couple years later. Just has that. Mm, I dig it. Stride. Now, did you know that you can find me anywhere you can find podcasts? Probably because you found me. I am also on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter under the name Heart of Markness. So, visit me in those places. Become my friend on Facebook. Or join the Facebook group, rather. Follow me on Twitter. I will follow you back. We will be pals. And, of course, YouTube. When you're on YouTube, subscribe on YouTube. Listen to this very podcast in a lower bit rate. Just cuz. Um, heartofmarkness.com is a website that I own. I own it for you. So you can download these shows that I cover. For instance, you can download this entire freaking, sorry for the language, concert. Heartofmarkness.com. Grab it for free. It is uh, their wave files because I receive them as wave files, just straight CD rips, and I don't want to convert them to flack. So you get wave files for free. Write your congressman. Um, and it's cool. I like the whole concept of sharing music. This music is shared with me for free. I share it with you for free. That's the way it should be, baby. Let's go set someone free. I was going to say set someone on fire. That was pretty dark. All righty, friendos, I have one more song for you. Actually, it's two more songs. What, Mark? You're too good to us. I am. It's a fault. I'm working on it. So, oh, wait, I'm not done. <laughs> Let me get my <laughs> straw hat on. <laughs> get back up on the podium. Also, if you like what I do and you like how I do it <laughs> seamlessly and smoothly as I do, uh, consider becoming a patron of this fine podcast. You get your own special podcast every month. That's better than everyone else's because you're paying for it. And it keeps the lights on in this place. Helps pay for, actually doesn't help pay for, pays for the hosting on SoundCloud of the podcast itself, the hosting on Mega for the drive, the cloud drive on which all these shows I have are stored, and you get access to that drive if you're a patron as well. Everything I've done, a whole bunch of stuff I haven't done, just there in a great big mishmash for you. You got to dig through it, like trying to find a cassette in the glove compartment, but still, it's there, and you can have it. Patreon.com slash Heart of Markness is where you'll find that. Or when you're at heartofmarkness.com, you can press the patron badge and it'll take you right there. And if you don't want to be a patron or you can't be a patron, no worries. It's a free podcast. All right. I hope you're not picking up on that. Oh, it's it's the uh, my headphone cord rubbing against my shirt. It's just going right into my ear, and I'm like, holy fuck, if that's on the recording, it's going to suck. But I doubt it is, and if it is, sorry. Here it is. The last shows I'm going to play, the last songs I'm going to play, I think I'm going to do a two-parter, because we haven't even done Days and Confused or anything like that. And it's a corker of a show, because it's 1970, and it's not like they had a lot of bad ones. So, what I have for you today is organ solo, Jonesy's organ solo, bleeding over on the Jonesy emphasis from last week. And it's badass and segues seamlessly into Thank You, which is the next song after that. It will be played in one big long whoop, because I merged the tracks, because that's how it is. All right, friendos, thank you. Uh, organ solo, and thank you. Here you go. And, surprise, surprise, it is still April 12th, 1970, Bloomington. I haven't changed shows, although that would be funny. Here you go. <laughs>
Stephen Wilson remix Robert Plant's albums. I'd like to have him remix... You know what? I'd love to have him remix The Firm and remix Outrider as well. If you don't know who Stephen Wilson is, he's the guitarist and leader of the prog band of Porcupine Tree. He also is a hell of a producer, and he, ha- <laughs> he has a side gig of remixing classic albums. He remixed a ton of Jethro Tull albums. He remixed uh, four or five Yes albums, the the, the really good ones. Um, and just uh, Tears for Fears, XTC, he remixed just a, bu- a whole bunch of theirs. And he doesn't do anything crazy with them. He remixes, he, rem- he remixes them nicely, cleans them up, and is able to... Anyways... He does good stuff. He does good work. He doesn't reinvent. He he just... I don't know. I like his work. I would love to have him work on Robert Plant and Jimmy's stuff from the 80s to kind of smooth out the rough 80s edges like he did with uh, Tears for Fears. Songs from the Big Chair. That album was really well produced, but 80s has a sound and 80s digital effects and things have a limitation. If you can go back to the multi-tracks and then go back and recreate some of those effects with modern shit and and tease out different instruments from like modern shit. Like who did he have? Yes. He said Yes had a 24 track, I think Tales from Topographic Oceans maybe. Yes had a 24 track multi. And each one of those tracks was crammed full of stuff the way that Sgt. Pepper's 4 track is. So he went through and removed, like, you know, a drum track that it was only hit every once in a while could be replaced with a bass line or a vocal or something like that. And he would parse out all those individual instruments, give them their own tracks. So he had 100 plus tracks to work with, but each instrument could then be properly mixed and equalized and given effects, etc. Fucking amazing. I would love to have that done. Where'd that come from, Mark? Well, dear listener, see, while you were listening to that wonderful song, I cooked and had dinner, watched a bunch of YouTube, and then uh, said, oh yeah, I gotta finish a podcast. So I, I have lived a lifetime. So, Coolio, that was good. I believe, unless something crazy happens, I uh, believe I'll do a part two next week because there's good stuff on this tape. Um, And thank you, Michael Gillespie, for taping it, keeping it, releasing it, and then doing an interview about the whole thing, which is really fascinating. Really cool to hear. I like it. I wonder if all that whispering is done to mark each song with the track, which I get. But Jesus Christ, um, because there's echo and stuff. And since there is echo and stuff, this this, I can't see how this could be the master tape. So maybe there's a master that's a generation cleaner, a generation, you know, better than uh, who knows? I don't know if Zep fan. I can't remember if Zep fan asked him or not. Maybe I'll go back and listen. You should listen. Tell me. All right, guys. Thank you very much. I love you. And I hope everybody has a great everything. Please be good to yourselves and each other. And bye-bye.